Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, uh, the All Merciful, the Most Compassionate, um, and peace and prayers upon His Prophet and Messenger Muhammad, and upon his family and his companions until the last day. So first, we'll start with um, with three letters in Arabic. Um, the um, When we get into, into writing Arabic, uh, it's important to, to understand a few things. One, um, one that in, in English, when we write English, um, typically each, each letter, we have, we have two forms of each letter. Right? We have a capital, we have an upper, ca- uh, upper case, uh, capital, and lower case. Um, and then what how that's written is depends on you know whether it's upper case or uppercase or lowercase depends on the kind of writing we're writing or its position in the sentence something like that um, in Arabic basically there there are potentially four different ways that each letter can can be written in Ara- in English we have a choice of of joining up letters joining them together or not so for example um, when, when I first learned to write, I, I wrote my name like that, Adrian. And then, actually, what you learn in um, in British schooling is you learn you learn joined up writing, which is interesting. It's basically it's basically writing everything like that, only linking the words. It looks like a rather messy form of cursive right joined up writing but then also in in America too we learn we learn cursive which is easier so basically um, basically in in English we have a choice between between writing each letter separately or writing them together and usually in certain contexts we'll, we'll see it um, one way like you typically won't see um, signs and things like that written all joined together you'd see it with with letters separate um, but in Arabic uh, you don't really have a choice in Arabic we have to write everything connected so as possible within a word every every letter connects to the one that um, um, connects to the other words around it. Now, there are some letters in Arabic um, that just based on their form, they can't connect to what comes after it. But every word, every letter in, in Arabic can connect to the letter that comes before it. That'll make more sense as we go on and start practicing and we, we get examples and, and get, some of the, get some of the letters under our belt. The first letter that we'll go over today is bat. Everyone say bat. 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 Ba. Okay. So the name of the letter, the name of the letter is ba. The sound of the letter is. It's just like an English B. 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 Right. Now it's important to, that we distinguish between the name of a letter and the sound of a letter, because if I give you once again, if I if I say, if I give you this word, this word in English, we don't say this word is. Beauty, beauty, right? We say it's bat because we understand there's a difference between the name of a letter. We understand this letter's name B, this one is A, this one is T. We don't say all the names together, right? This is sometimes sometimes we we make the, this mistake when when starting Arabic we say the names of the letter instead of the sound of the letter. So the name of the of, of this letter is bat. Everyone once again bat. 
b a But the sound it makes is b b b. Right? Okay, so every letter in Arabic can potentially have four different forms. One form is when it's, when it's alone, when it stands alone and isn't connected to any letters, it has a particular form. Then when it begins a word, it has its own particular form too. I.e. When, when it's the first letter in the word and there are letters that are coming after it. It could potentially have a different form when it's in the middle of a word. And then finally, when it's at the end, i.e. there's a letter coming before it, but not a letter after it, then um, it, has, uh, it has a certain way to be written too. And a lot of the letters uh, are almost identical in, in these. Uh, most of them, it looks pretty similar. Some of them, they look uh, kind of not so similar. So it just depends on the letter. Um, what, what you have to work out for that. So, t take for example, ba. Ba. Bismillah. Just like as in, Bismillah. Everyone say, Bismillah. 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 Right, it begins with a ba. So, ba alone, its basic form, if you're just writing the letter, you start. Slightly above the line, you go down to the line, go now across the line a bit, like along the line, just above it, and then curve up. You do that, and then you put a dot under it. And that's our bat. I'll do that a few more times. Start above the line, go now on the line, come up above the line. So it almost, it, it kind of has a hook on either side. It's, it's a line on the line with a hook on either side and then, very important, a dot under the line. Just like that. So we'll go through We'll go through the four forms of this and then I'll come around and, and take a look at everyone, see, see that everyone's, everyone's getting it. So ideally with each, with each form that we learn to, you write out on your paper, write it out several times um, so I can see how your handwriting is and, and see if there's anything to, anything to check. When it begins the letter, it's basically going to, to lose um, that, that last part of itself and it's just, it's just a tooth, pretty much. It's, it's basically a tooth. We have something sitting above the line and then we go on. And the dot is below that tooth. So see here, when it stands alone, the dot goes in the middle of the whole letter. This is the whole letter, and we have the dot resting below the line in the middle of the whole letter. When it's, when it's a tooth, it goes just below the tooth. So we're going, and then this line means it's going on to the next letter, whatever the next letter is in the sentence. Starting above the line, now going on the line, and then on to the next letter with a dot under the tooth. Make sure it's not too tall, too. We say, you know, if we think about the whole length of the, of, of the line we have, this is, say, say this, this distance right here is the tallest that, that a letter possibly could be on the page. So make sure it's not completely going up like, like this. Oh, the pens aren't so great. Um, yeah, make sure it's not completely going up like that. Then it starts looking like another letter. Yep. Yeah, no, go ahead. 
The B is at the beginning of a word. Yep. A when it stands alone, B at the beginning of a word, M in the middle of a word, and then E at the end of a word. <clears throat> when it's in the middle, we have that tooth again, only we're coming into the tooth. So, <coughs> excuse me. If we have a letter, if the letter that, it, that comes before it is connecting to it, then we're coming in from that letter, we go up for the tooth, then we go on with a dot under that tooth. So coming in from another letter, up for a tooth, and then along to the next letter. In from the previous letter, up for a tooth, and on to the next letter. And then finally, when it's at the end of a word, it's like we're coming into the, uh, the position where, um, it's like we're coming into the form when it's alone. So we're coming in from a previous letter, we'll go up for a tooth, and then we go along the line, and then, and then up again. And we have a dot now, just like when it's alone, we have a dot in the middle of the form of the whole letter. And also, if, um, um, if any sisters uh, or anyone is having a, having a hard time, make sure to, um, to, to sit closer. You know, we'll say if, uh, if any sisters in their back are, are having a hard time seeing, then, then perhaps you can sit on, on the side here too. Um, so there's kind of like, front in general for brothers, um, a few feet behind for sisters, but then brothers will stick to like this general area if any sisters need, need, then they'll have kind of that side too if they need to be closer to the board. One more time for the end form. So we're coming in from a, coming in from a previous letter. Now we go up for that tooth along the line and then up for a final tooth or tail with a dot in the middle of the letter there. Okay. I'm going to come around and, and, and check everyone's right. You know, it says, as I've been seeing things, um, one, make sure that at, at alone and the end forms um, the, <clears throat> the two teeth uh, uh, at either end of the bat, they're the same height. Um, and then make sure that, that the tooth of the bat isn't too high. It only goes up, once again say, if the total um, height of the line is, is about up to there, it's only gonna, gonna go up about um, uh, a third or uh, maybe halfway up the total height of the line. It's not going to go all the way up. There's some letters that will go all the way up, um, one of which we'll, we'll learn today. Um, so make sure it's not too tall. So now, the next letter, that's the number two for today, is the ta. Everyone say ta. 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 So the sound of it, once again, like the bat, the sound is t, t, t. The name of the letter is ta. Um, now, this letter and then the next one will do as well. They have the same, they actually have the same basic form as the bat. They look like the bat, they differ in dots in the way that the dots are placed. So I'll show you. So we have, when it stands alone, we have that same form of the bat along the line with, with two teeth, sorry. 
just don't do the dot below the line. Instead, we have two dots above the line, or above the letter, sitting in that cup there, almost. The cup that's formed by the, by the way the left is written. It's the same form as the bat, only different types of dots. And now, this is going to be the same for all the forms here. So I'm not going to go slowly through um, writing out each, uh, each way the form is. Um, just kind of um, copy what, what we did, how we learned to do the bat. Just make sure, once again, so if everyone could look up here. Now, when we're making the tooth, when it's just one tooth, so either when it's at the beginning of a word or in the middle, those dots are going to go right above the tooth, right above that tooth, sitting above it, not after it. The best way is to put them right above the tooth, just like how for the bat we have the dot right below the tooth. For the third letter, like I said, it's going to have the same, same kind of form, only different dots. So we have that, well first of all, the letter is called Everyone say, that. That. Right, so the letter is like the sound, th in English, th, 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 th. And this letter has same basic form, but then it has three dots. Two dots and then one dot above those two dots. This is the th. So an important note about how to pronounce this letter. In English, uh, when, we have, when we have TH written out in, in English, TH can really mean 
uh, one of two sounds. It's not just one sound in itself. So, for example, if if I say um, Okay, let's say these words together. First, we have this. Then we have there. There. Then we have thief. Thief. Then we have theme. Theme. Can everyone tell there's a difference in the way these sound? The first two are, the sound is th. The second two, the last two, the sound is th, right? The difference between them basically gets down to if your vocal, if your vocal cord is working on the letter or not. So, if I say one of the bottom ones, so thief, if I take the, the first sound in thief or theme and extend it, so I say I feel it's pretty light. There's a lot of air coming out there. And it's all coming out basically right here. Air coming out here. If, however, I do the same with, with these two, the first sound in this or theme, or this or there, excuse me, I go th, th. There's more than air coming out. You can, if you put your, finger, if you put your hand on your, on your vocal cord, you can feel that there's vibration there. Everyone do that, hand on the vocal cord. This, this, there, there, that, that. Does everyone feel that vibration there? So now try, now try feeling the difference between this and thief with your hand here. The th. Everyone feel there's a difference there? So that th is this one right here. It's the second of the two. The th in Arabic here, <clears throat> these, these two sounds are actually, they're both in Arabic. So we'll get to the Arabic letter that corresponds to the th sound. But right now, we have the th sound, as in thief and theme, th, so it's without vibration here. That's important to pay attention to because, because in English, th could mean, could mean either one of those. One more note now about about writing the letters. Sometimes you, you'll find with some of the letters in, in Arabic, there's a, way, there's a way to write them that if they were completely printed out well, this is a way that you would see them written out or printed, say, in a book. But if you were to write them with your own handwriting, then there are some almost like shortcuts you do. You don't write them completely the same way. So, when we have these, these dots here, when we have these, um, uh, a number of dots, more than one dot, when we're writing the, the, the Arabic word in, in handwriting, we're not going to take the time to do all of those dots, actually. Some people do, but it's very rare. Native Arabic speakers and people who, who use Arabic a lot, they realize that it saves a lot of time um, to not pick up the pen to do each individual dot. Therefore, the dots get joined. So, so instead of having those two dots there, you have a line. You write the, the basic form of it and then like that. 
showing that that's basically, it means there's two dots there. And this is basically for any letter in Arabic in which there are two dots on the letter, typically when you're writing it. And so what I, what I want to see now um, when I see your homework is, um, you know, I, I'd at least like to see at least for some time you try doing it with connecting them because it's a lot easier and that's where you at least have to get used to seeing that. Because if, if anyone writes Arabic for you, gives you something in Arabic and, and they've written it out, it's, it's almost always going to be with, with the dots connected. Similarly for the, for the fat, we typically don't write out all those dots. It becomes a hat, almost. That's how it's connected. The three dots get connected by a hat. So it might be kind of tricky to distinguish between, between these three letters now. Three letters, same kind of basic form, only different numbers of dots. Well, how do you tell the, how do you tell the, the difference between them? There, there are various tricks that you can use. One, one way um, that, that I think about it is for ba, there's one dot. Where? Below the line, right, on the bottom or below the line. Ba, one dot below the line. For ta, we have two dots, right? Two dots for ta, and for tha, three, exactly. Tha, three dots. Also helps you if you're having, having trouble remembering which one is it, the or tha, the, that this letter symbolizes. You think three, because it has three dots. Th three, right? One dot below the line for ba, two dots for ta, and three dots for tha. So any questions about, about these before we, before we go on to some vowels? Yes. Um, when you do this and you connect the dots, is it difficult to mistake those signs for the sukun or the, the vowel? Is it easy? How is, maybe, I don't want to go to the test, but yeah, how yeah. is it distinguished when there's a vowel that may come with that? Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that today, inshallah. Yeah, because we'll be going over um, uh, some of the vowel signs and we'll show the difference between telling between the difference between um, these symbols and the vowel signs. Yeah, inshallah. Okay. Uh, now, once again, the, this class, I'm doing it kind of packed, packed together. Uh, the last time I did it, it was two times a week, uh, Wednesdays and, and Sundays. Um, this time I'm doing it only once a week because um, that I think works better for uh, it seemed it seemed like it was going to work better for people um, getting to the class and being it on a, uh, it's, it's usually easier to make a Sunday than it is a, a Wednesday evening um, but that also means that that it's going to um, we're going to be covering a lot of material in each Sunday so I know that um, you might not be getting everything completely during this class period, don't, don't worry, don't worry, alhamdulillah. We just make dua that Allah instills in us the knowledge and the understanding to, uh, to, to understand, understand the language of his book, the language of his prophet, peace be upon him. Um, and, um, and so don't worry if you don't immediately get it, but um, understand it, it's just going to take a bit of, a bit of work outside of class. And then inshallah we'll have, we'll have the videos uh, online too, if. Um, um, if, if you didn't get anything and you want to go back, go back to that and go back to the explanation. So, last, last class period, last Sunday, I had to, we had to end kind of short because the battery ran out on the video, alhamdulillah. Um, but I was going to go into some of the aspects of the, um, 
um, of how kind of the history of the Arabic language and, and how the way it was written developed historically. In Arabic, when you typically see words on a page in Arabic, um, words, um, unless you know the word, you wouldn't really know we wouldn't really know how to pronounce it. In English, um, actually in, in English it's, um, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, we have our own trouble in, in English. Like English, spelling, pronunciation ba based on spelling, it's a complete mess when you think about it. Um, when you think about it, uh, this is one example I was given one time. If you write out Wow, this is a dirty red pen. Does that pick up on the video also? Okay. If you write this word out in English, okay, how would, how would you see this? First of all, has anyone ever seen this example before? Okay. Okay, so how do you think you would say this? Goatee. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a reasonable guess. Right. Um, but, if you take the GH in tough, take the O in women, and take the TI in nation, now how do you pronounce that? What is this word? What is the word? Close? Close. Come on, come on. So we had, we had one person say fishy, that's close. Fish. Fish, this word, if you, if you compare how these, how these letters appear in other English words, this word could be pronounced fish, right here, fish. Everyone, look at this word and say fish, fish, right? Because if you take, because tough, the G-H in tough is f, the O in women is i. And the T-I in nation is sh, right? So, f, i, sh, fish. That's just to show you that in English, when you get down to it, our writing system, pronunciation, it's a complete mess. It's a complete mess. Alhamdulillah, Arabic is not that way. English is actually a very tough language to learn in, in, this, in this way because, for one, we don't, like, we don't really have grammar. I mean, no, we do. I mean, we have grammar, of course. But there are so many exceptions to, to grammar. Like, you know, if, if, you have, if you have a present verb, a lot of the times you have to learn the present verb and then learn a completely different verb for the past. Okay, if I'm going today, what did I do yesterday? I went. What? <laughs> right? In most languages, those two words are pretty, pretty related, right? Plurals. What's, um, what's the plural of child? Children. Okay, not childs. What's the plural of goose? Geese. Okay, that's even stranger. Because you're not even adding something to it, you're completely changing the vowels around in the middle. What about the plural of moose? Moose. Same thing? What? <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, Arabic, Arabic is, not, is not so arbitrary. Arabic is, is based on rules. It has much more rules. So, so when you're learning Arabic, you have, to learn, you have to learn a lot more rules, but in the end, it works out really well because those rules actually do work. In English, you learn the rules and then you spend the rest of your time learning the exceptions to the rules and those take years. Um, if you're learning the language. Same with spelling. 
you learn the basic way to spell, you learn the basic way that, yeah, how you say this is goatee, but then you get to these kind of words and you're like, oh, what just happened? Women, it's, you mean it's not toge and wo men and neti own? No. Alhamdulillah, Arabic is not that way. Arabic, when you write it out, first of all, the whole grammar and the writing system is based on rules. Hard and fast rules for the most part. Um, and, and so Arabic writing, it's very phonetic. So when you see a ba, you know it's a b sound. When you see a th, you know it's uh, not a th. When you see a tha, you know it's a th sound. It's always going to be a th sound. When you see a th in English, it could be th, it could be the, it could be t. Right? And that's, there are probably other examples too. I don't know. Maybe th forms, forms other sounds too. Um, ch could be ch, could be k, could be, I mean, in some ways, yeah, it could be sh, could be ch. Really, I mean, technically, I mean, sometimes, you know, like we have uh, the German composer Bach. Technically, or, or the lo Loch Ness monster, Loch Ness, right? Anyway, um, in Arabic, when you see a letter, when you see a letter, you know, you know, you get what you see in Arabic. You see a letter, you know how to pronounce it. Now, the flip side, though, is that Arabic has a unique thing in that not all of the vowels in Arabic will be written out. Not all of the vowels in Arabic are written out. So, for example, um, the, word, the word meaning he scattered, he scattered is written this way. So this here, this is two letters in Arabic. We have two letters here. What are the letters? Ba and then? Ba and tha. Right. Ba and tha. Here's a ba. And here's a tha. Remember, it goes the other way, though. So if we're going to write it in English. Okay, I'll get to, I have to ditch this marker. If we're going to write it in English. Okay, how do you say this? The word itself is betha, 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 because the the consonant, uh, the the vowels in between the consonants aren't written out. Pretty much, when you see letters in Arabic, you're seeing the consonants. You're not seeing the vowels. Some vowels are written out. We'll get to that today. We're going to be going over the vowels, inshallah. Um, but some vowels are not written out. Um, so when originally when Arabic was, um, was, was written out, at the time that the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi we had um, the, the first way that the Quran was written out um, in the time of uh, just, um, or even in the time of the Prophet والسلام, there were parts of the Quran that were, that were written out and so when it was written out, for example um, we had this word uh, betha. betha would have been written like this just like that so you can tell that there are two letters here there's a tooth for one letter and then, and then this part for another letter now, beyond that, we don't really know what's going on. We don't know. We don't know what the dots are. So we don't know if the first one is a ba, is it a b, is it a t, is it a th. Same for the for the second one. We have no idea. Just looking at just looking at the writing. No idea. Not only that, but we don't know the vowels that come between it too. Say we know that it is a ba and a tha. Okay, we know that. Now is it bath? Is it buth? Is it bith? 
بث بثي بث So what happened was that originally <coughs> the Quran was it was written this way without dots without vowels and so then as Islam began to spread and more people came into Islam non-Arabs came into Islam people who didn't know didn't understand the Arabic language they started making mistakes because originally the way the Quran was, was written it was just as a memory it was an aid for memory people already knew the Quran they just wrote down these, these lines on the page to, to remind them exactly what came after what but then they started teaching Islam to others and bringing it to other, other places and, and pretty soon pretty soon people started realizing that, that non-Arabs couldn't really handle this language they were making all kinds of mistakes with the Quran because they saw this and they didn't know was that first one a ba, was it a ta, was it a fa and there are actually other options too we'll get to some of the other letters that are written similar to this only with a different combination of dots and so, and so the scholars came up with um, a way to write the vowels in between the letters and they came up with, with the dot system um, and, and this is what, um, is what was able to preserve uh, the Quran and make sure that people didn't make mistakes in pronunciation although originally the Arabic language was written without dots, without vowels so now a little bit of uh, yeah, now that we've gone into, into a little bit of, his, bit of history we'll talk about the vowels um, is it okay if I um, if I erase the ba ta fa, everyone, everyone got that down, right? Okay. I'm gonna need this room again. Okay. So in Arabic, in Arabic now we have basically have two types of vowels. One type of vowel will not be written out. Just like I gave you that, that form in which, in which we, we had no idea what the vowels between them were. Um, typically not written out, although there are symbols for them uh, that you will see, and you'll see them in the Quran. They're in the Quran so that you make sure to pronounce it correctly, but if you open up a typical Arabic book, you're not going to see the vowels in there. There are types of vowels that, um, that often isn't written, and then there, there are types of vowels that are written actually and are written in the text so first we'll be going over the the vowels that, that are written the the vowels that are written are the long vowels in Arabic there are, there are three qualities of vowels and two lengths of vowels so Lengths, for lengths we're talking about only two options, long or short, long or short vowels. So the first vowel we'll go over is the vowel, well first of all the long form of it is called, it's called alif, everyone say that, alif, alif, alif. and the sound it makes is a long ah, uh, whoops, a long ah, uh, as in bat. Everyone say for me, bat, bat, bat. 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 Right, that's the sound. Ah, uh, everyone, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh. So this is the sound of alif, alif. When you see an alif. You know it's going to be pronounced uh, uh. The way to write Alif It's one of the easiest ones to write In the alone form It's Just a line down A long line down Start at the top 
and go down. And this is the alif. Uh. When it's at the beginning of a word, exactly the same. This letter will not connect to what comes after it. It doesn't connect to what comes after it, so it's just like that, you write a line down and then you take your pen off the page and, and then you go on after that to the next letter. Then once we, once we go through the vowels then we'll, we'll go through writing some examples so we can see how to put the letters together inshallah. This is the alif. Now every letter, although not all the letters in Arabic can connect to what goes after them, all of the letters can connect to what comes before them. If what comes before them can connect to what comes after it, right? So if we're coming in from another letter, we're coming in along the line and we go up for the alif. If we're in the middle of a word, we're coming in from a previous letter, and we go up for the alif and then lift our, lift our pen. Coming in from the previous letter, up for the alif. And it's the same for the end form. So I'm going to come around now to, uh, um, to see this. Um, I'd like to see writing the, um, how you write the alif and then, and then also the, the ta and tha, which I, I wasn't able to see before. I know it's going to be a lot of information, inshallah, if it's not all collecting right now. In the next, in the next week, as you go through your notes, maybe look at, look at uh, yeah, um, go through your notes and think about it. Um, then, um, then it'll start, start forming, start putting itself together. Um, so this is the long vowel. Uh, everyone again. Uh, uh, uh. Um, the, now, each of the long vowels, all of the long vowels are written out. You'll see them written out in the word. The short vowels are the ones that are not written out. So every long vowel has a corresponding short vowel. So, each short vowel is just, it's half the time of the, of the long vowel. Or in other words, the long vowel is double the time of each short vowel. So if I say, Beth, if I say, Beth, that's a short A uh, in there. But if I say, Beth, Beth, that's a, that's a long vowel, okay? So everyone say for me, Beth. 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 Now, bath. 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 Right? Beth. <coughs> bath. 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 Okay, so, the way that, let's see. The way that the short vowel is written out, the short vowel corresponding to alif is the a ah sound. Instead of a, ah, it's a. Ah. Ah. It's a slanted line going down like this. I'll do that again. Like this. Above the letter where it appears, it's like that. Above the line. So I'm giving you this, and then and then and then we'll go through a few examples, inshallah. One more important thing to remember about this: this this symbol, 
short vowel a uh, a uh, is called oh, all my pens aren't going exactly right now let's try something else oh picked up the wrong one anyway okay here we go that's better his name is Fatha. Everyone say Fatha. Fatha. Right? The Fatha in Arabic means literally opening. Opening. Fatha. Um, there, there was a series of battles that occurred um, after the, the Prophet's death, alayhi salatu wasalam, that opened up the lands from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to China they opened them up to Islam therefore those those wars are called the, the wars of Fath Fath also in the intention that we say um, the first thing that we say is Ya Fathahu Ya Fathahu so O Opener a Fathah it's one of the names of Allah the one who opens Fathah just like Fathah opening um, we say the first line of the intention we start with is Ya Fatahu Ya Alimu Iftah Lana Fathan Qariba. So Ya Fatahu O opener one O, o opening one Ya Alimu O knowledgeable one Iftah open for us Iftah Lana if open for us Iftah Lana Fathan Open for us an opening Iftah Lana Fathan Iftah Fathan This is a Fatha Fatha Why is it a Fatha? Because when you say A ah, A ah, Everyone look at my mouth as I say A ah, A ah, A ah. I'm opening Opening the sides of, of the mouth A right. A ah, ah. That's why this scholars called it a Fatha Fatha So the short Fatha is the short vowel for the long vowel alif. Alif is a. Uh, everyone say alif a. Uh. Alif a. Uh. Alif a. Uh. <coughs> Fatha a. Uh. Fatha a. Uh. So now, putting some of the things that we've learnt today together. Okay, so everyone watch how I write this. I start with a ba in the first position. Now I'm going in to an alif. And then I have a fa. So how do we say this? Everyone everyone try to work it out. Don't don't say it completely aloud. Everyone try to work it out in, in your head. Okay, now, how do we say it? Bath. Right? Everyone, bath. Bath. Right? We have a b in the first, in the beginning form, an alif in the middle form, and then a th in the, well, it's an end form, but we don't have the hook coming in from the end form for the th because the alif isn't isn't joining to it the alif doesn't join to what comes after it okay if i write this now we can compare it to everyone look at this and try to pronounce it but just to yourself for now and then we'll do it together this one whoops Okay, guesses? How do we say how do we say this? Beth. Beth. Everyone after me. Beth. Beth. Right? Ah as in bat. Ah. 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 Beth. Everyone after me now. Bath. 
Bath. Bath. Bath. Bath. Sometimes when it's learning the long and short vowels, sometimes it's helpful to kind of tap things out to yourself. So we have bath, that's two beats, right? Bath and bath. Bath, bath. So short vowels will be one beat, long vowels will be two beats. It's important not to, not to overlook this because it can have completely different meaning if you don't give the vowels their proper, their proper right. So, first of all, if you're not thinking about, about the length of the vowels, you won't be writing them correctly because long vowels are written, short vowels are not written. Also, it can really affect the meaning too. So, for example, we have um, when um, when Allah brings the Quran down, in many in many places it talks about how how Allah speaking in the form of we, Allah speaking in the form of we says we brought the Quran down, nazzalna or anzalna, two different forms, uh, differ slightly in meaning but pretty much the same thing, anzalna, anzalna, it ends with an alif, anzalna. That na means we. We brought it down. Everyone say anzalna. Anzalna. Whereas if I say anzalna, everyone hear the difference? Anzalna. Anzalna. Right? The second one that I say is a short vowel. Anzalna means those women brought it down. It's a feminine plural. It means a group of women brought it down. So if you don't properly say, and this is actually one of the most common uh, mistakes, that even when people know the Quran and they read the Quran, native Arabic speakers even, it's one of the most common mistakes to make when you have, um, when you have at the end of a verb, na, and people don't properly, uh, properly extend the alif at the end. Na, they just say na. Nah. If you say na, if you just say na, you're assigning things that Allah has, has decreed of for himself. You're saying instead of Allah doing it, it's a group of women doing it. Anzalna, anzalna, uh, anzalna, uh, al -kita'a. right. Anzalnahu, anzalnahu means we brought it down, anzalnahu, whereas anzalnahu means those women brought it down, a group of women brought it down, anzalnahu. See, so, so this is just one example of why it, 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 we really need to pay attention when we're thinking about lengths of vowels, because it completely changed the meaning. And scholars say that if we don't, when we're pronouncing the Quran, if we don't give the vowels their right, pronounce long vowels as long and short vowels as short, then it's, it's actually haram because we're changing the word of Allah. It's important as we, as we begin things not to, not to get so caught up in this um, because everyone, we're all struggling. We all can't immediately pronounce everything correctly in our salah, when we're reading Quran, all these things. But still, just to have in the back of our minds that it, it's a serious matter, right? This is a serious matter. And so, and so we want to make sure to get this right. But the flip side, when we do get it right, there's immense reward in it. Immense reward that, that we get and that we get for that struggle in trying to get it right too. One more example. Okay. So everyone just take a oops. Everyone just take a moment to to look at these two words. These are two different words with different sets of vowels. So in a moment I'm going to say one of these and you have to you have to tell me which one it is. Either number 1 or number 2. 
All right, so just take a moment and try to read, read this yourself. Try to think how we might pronounce this. Okay. Number one, number two. So what I say is, Thaba. Thaba. Which one is it? One or two? Thaba. One or two? Thaba. Thaba. Exactly. Number two. If we were to write this out, this one would be. See, we have a tha, we have a ba, and we have a alif. And then in between the tha and the ba, a fatha. This one, we have a tha, we have an alif, and we have a ba. And then on the ba is a fatha, right? So everyone say for me, tha ba versus tha ba. Tha ba. Thaba. 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 Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Okay, now, moving on to, um, almost done, pretty much. Um, Arabic, uh, Arabic language is a beautiful language, and it's, I mean, it's hard, it's hard. It's considered one of the hardest languages for English speakers to learn, but that shouldn't hold us back because for one, we get immense reward from learning it. And for another, it's hard, but it's actually not that hard. Vowels could be very difficult. There are some languages that have a dozen or more different vowels. English has, uh, I'm not exactly sure how many. English has a, a, quite a few vowels. And then you can have different combinations of vowels too in English. Arabic, just three. So one we have a, uh, a. Uh. Everyone say for me again. A, uh, a. Uh. Okay. Another one we have is, ooh, ooh. As in the English word boot. Everyone say for me. Boot, boot. boot. So the sound is ooh, ooh. Once again, the long vowel will be written out, the short vowel not. The name of this long vowel is wow. Everyone say for me, wow, wow. Yeah, we also have that in English, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Name of the letter is wow. When you see it, at least for now, you're going to pronounce it ooh. Okay. The way that it's written is when it's alone, we start on the line. Everyone looks, we start on the line, do a circle back above the line, and then a tail down below. So a closed circle above the line and then tail below. And just like Alif, it has no dots, just like that. And it's going to look this just like the alif as well, doesn't connect to what comes after it. So it's going to look exactly the same when it's in the beginning. Close circle above the line, a loop going below, or a little tail going below.
Now when it's in the middle, and there's a letter that's connecting before it, we're going to be coming in from that letter and then go to the wa. So just like the alif, we're coming in along the line, go back to make a closed loop, and then a tail down below. Coming in from the letter, loop, tail below. In from the letter, loop above, tail below. And it's the same for the beginning and the end, just like the other. So I'll make one note now about the, about the short vowel um, and then we'll go on to the final vowel which actually isn't that hard to, um, that hard to write um, and, then, and then I'll take a look inshallah. The long vowel, ooh, everyone say again for me, wow, ooh, wow, ooh, wow, ooh, wow, ooh. right, um, so the long vowel is ooh. Short vowel is going to be ooh, ooh. Everyone say for me ooh, ooh. This one now is basically a little while above the line though, like this. So if we give some examples now, okay, everyone look down below. It's okay if you haven't completely copied everything, it's, it's okay. That there'll be time for inshallah when I, when I go around to copy down everything. This right here, everyone try to say um, to yourself, number one and number two. Try to work out what it is. Now, any volunteers for number one? Go ahead. Thauba? Okay. Close. Anyone else want to try? So we have, we have three letters in this word. We have a tha in the beginning position, we have a wow in the middle position, and we have a ba in the final position. So we have fa, right? Then a wow, then a ba. So how do we say this? Thub, right? Thub. Everyone with me. Thub. Thub. Good. Now the second one. Anyone want to try this? Come on. Give you a hint. It's almost like the first one. How does it differ? What's the difference between these two? Long and short. Long and short. Good. So if we know that this one is thub, what's this one? 
Good. Sub. Sub. We have a tha and we have a ba and between them a dhamma. Sorry, the The word for this symbol too is It's called everyone say it for me Dhamma. 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 Sorry, D A M M A. Yeah, capital D A M M A. A dhamma literally means uh, has to do with enclosing and hugging. Because when you say it, you go, ooh. When you say, ooh, your lips are, it's like your, your lips are making a circle, they're enclosing, going out and you're forming a circle with your lips, ooh. Whereas with the fatha, we were opening our lips. We're going, ah. But when we go, ooh, we make a circle with our lips. Almost a little hug for the air with our lips. Ooh, ooh. Bamma. So if we have a tha, and then we have a ba, and in between them a dhamma, we have tha and ba, and in between them u, we have thub. So everyone, everyone say this to me. Thub, 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 thub. Okay. Now, just a little bit of, of review for the, for the letters before we go on to the final letter. Right? The three letters we learnt first were ba. ba. Everyone after me. Ba. 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 Then we learnt ta. 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 Then we learnt fa. 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 So ba. ba. Ta. ta. Fa. Ta. Ba. Ta. 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 Fa. Now the, the vowels that we've learned so far are alif, right? Alif and wow. So the sounds we say alif a, alif a, fatha a, fatha a, wow u, wow u, vamma u. Bamma u. One, one more time. Alif a. Fatha a. Wow u. Bamma u. So finally, any any questions on on that? By the way. And one more point. We had the the question uh, a few minutes ago um, about how we tell the difference between um, say we have a ba and then we have a fatha a fatha on the ba the fatha is going to be slanted like that it's not going to be like the dots on a ta because the dots on a ta are just right across whereas the fatha is slanted downwards it down like that. That is ba. Everyone after me. Ba. 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 Whereas if we wrote this, it would be ba. 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 Okay. Now finally, fortunately, we don't really need to. Oh wait, no, we do. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. Um, the the final vowel is in Arabic we have a we have u and we have e everyone say after me e e, e. 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 as in beet like sugar beets beets beet everyone say for me beet beet 
So the vowels in Arabic, bat, boot, beat. Bat, boot, beat. Okay. The name of this letter is. Yeah. Everyone say for me. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go to when it's written in the beginning and the middle because these are, these are slightly easier than the other two. When ya is written, first of all, when we say a ya, how do we pronounce it? When we see a, when we see a ya, what do we say? E. e. Right, when we see ya in a word, we say e, at least for now. It just, looks just like ba, ta, and tha in beginning and middle. When it begins the word, when it's in the middle of the word, we have that tooth. Only difference is two dots below. Same tooth. This is the yeah. And once again, we can connect those two dots too. Yeah. Same thing in the middle. Up for a tooth and two dots below. Up for a tooth and two dots below. Yes. The yeah will. Just like ba, ta, and tha, the, the ya connects to what comes before it. Everything connects to what, can connect to what comes before it. And the ya will connect to what comes after it. Just like the ba, ta, and tha. So this line here that's coming after the ya, this line that's going down now along the line of the page, that's going to connect to the next letter. The way that it's at the beginning and the end of a word uh, is slightly different than the bat, tat, and that. What we have is we almost start with like an English C. So we do that on the line. But then we go below the line and a hook below the line like that with two dots below it. So we start with this above the line go on the line for a bit and then below and a hook up above and when you end this hook everyone look everyone look when you end the hook make sure that the hook under the line first of all the length of it is is pretty it's pretty long there it's not going to be short like that no it's it's pretty long um, and and make sure that you end the hook the hook ends slightly above the line so when you do it, we go down below the line and then end the hook once we've passed back above the line. And two dots below the whole thing. Finally, I'll go over this, um, well, just two more points. Um, we have the short vowel that corresponds to this and then the end position to go through. And then I'll take a look at how we've been writing well and, and yet. Yeah, I'll go around, inshallah. The way it's written in the end looks pretty similar to how it is alone, only we don't have this beginning part. 
So we're coming in, we're coming in from a previous letter. Now we do the hook under. The main thing is that we have that hook under the line or the tail under the line with two dots below it. Coming in from a previous letter and then under the line and a hook above. And when we see this, we say e. Alhamdulillah, almost done. Almost, almost. Just one final thing. Corresponding short vowel. Just like how we have two dots below the line, this, this thing below the line when we write the ya, whatever position it is, we have these two dots, or typically they're combined into one line. Those two dots are combined into one line here, like that, below the ya. Similarly, the short vowel that corresponds to the ya is, it's slanted though, but it's below the line, like that. Whenever we see this, we know it's i. I. Ya is e. this one is i. And its name is Kasra. Everyone say for me. Kasra. 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 Literally means breaking. Breaking. E. E. Because it's like the scholars talked about how you're almost breaking the sound. It's not, you're not opening your mouth with the fatha. You're not making a, a circle with your mouth like the bomma, you're going e. You're bringing the sound down, almost breaking it. E. Beat. Anyway. So finally we see that we see that the alif is a line down, but it the alif goes above the line. Therefore the fatha is above the line there. The dhamma we see the Dhamma is like a little wow above the line. And the Kasra, just like how the Ya has, the, has that line below the letter itself, the Kasra similarly slanted down like that, below the line. So now I'll come down and I'll take a look at this. Um, make sure when you're, when you're writing the Ya, in the final position, um, when you're writing it, it's, it's not just a loop down, or a tail down below the line. When, you're, when you go down below the line, you hook back a bit and then go up. When you're going below the line, hook, hook back a bit. See, so this, this part is important there, where you're hooking back, going backwards along the line, and then um, and then along up and then ending a bit above the line for the yeah. And finally, example. Okay, now here we have two words again. So everyone take, uh, take a moment to try to work out what these, what these two words are here. Try to putting the letters together.
Okay. Who wants to have a go at the first one? Close. What's this letter? How many dots does this letter have? It's a th. Yeah. So how do we say this? Close, close. How do we say the yeah again? E. e. Good. Everyone say B thi. B thi. Versus, what's this one? Bithi. Bithi. Everyone, bithi. 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 Okay? It's like this. One more time going through what we've written here. Thaba. 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 Thub. 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 Bithi. 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 Good. Any questions about, about that stuff? Okay. And then reviewing the vowels now. Alif a. Alif a. Fatha a. Fatha a. Wow u. Wow u. Bomma u. Bomma u. Ya i. Ya i. Kasra i. Kasra i. So we have a. 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 U. 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 I. 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 Okay. Okay. Any final questions? All right. So typically at the at the end of class. So for for each class, well. Um, uh, the main thing will be a homework sheet. Um, now the, the homework that I've made for today, it, um, um, typically half, half the homework will be just the sheet, uh, sorry, the, what's, what's on the sheet, and then the other half is using the, the DVD. Uh, yes? One huge favor. Yeah, yeah. Can you just write Bismillah on the board? Um, in, in Arabic completely? Yes. Um, maybe after class. But um, yeah, because you wanted to see how it's written, or you want you want it on the board. Okay. Um, I'm yeah. I'm actually going to. We, we can do it after class together. But I just I don't want to confuse everyone because we're not going to we're not going to go over those letters. Um, right. Um, anyway. So the for the homework. Uh, the, the main part of it is, is on the worksheet, but then there's also stuff to do um, from the DVD. Now, I, um, the DVDs haven't arrived yet, um, and, so, and so inshallah we'll just um, we'll have to make do for this week. I apologize for that. Um, if you do um, have the DVD or the book, um, then you can do um, these exercises um, for, it, for, for those. Um, also, I... Um, uh, we'll see how this goes. I don't like to to waste paper, so typically I say like if um, uh, I'll hand out homework to those people who have difficulty printing things. But ultimately, if you can print, um, then I prefer just to to send it to you via email and then you print it yourself. Because what I found last uh, last time was um, I I printed a lot and then those pages just just got wasted, um, which which is a shame. I mean, I like to save paper as much as possible. And two, like. Some of it had words from the Quran or um, um, or the name of Allah on them or stuff like that, and we don't want to 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 make that and just have to throw it away in in the end too. So so first of all, is there anyone who um, raise your hand if uh, if you'd rather have me um, print them and give it to you uh, in class rather than printing them yourselves um, uh, afterwards via email? Okay. Okay, so just come up to me after um, in a few minutes once we end class, and, and I'll give you the sheet. Um, 
the the homework for each each class period i mean i i expect that you'll spend at least an hour i'd say if you if you need to if you really want to learn the material i think it would take at least at least two hours of going through the material um, but obviously it's all individual initiative and I don't want to have anything keep you from being in these classes even if it, it seems like we're going we're going fast it might be best for you to keep with the with the class so that you get exposed to this material and inshallah if you're not getting it um, throughout these few weeks I'll I'll do my best to make sure we're all getting it but ultimately people learn it at different paces so you might have to take who knows uh, maybe you won't be able to put that much work in, so you might have to take another course in the future. But it will be beneficial, inshallah, to, to be exposed to, to all of this at least. Um, and as for the homework, this is all, everything that's on the sheets is there for your benefit um, to, to help you learn the material. Um, and so just do whatever, whatever is possible for you. Um, and I, uh, I'll see and, and we'll correct in, inshallah. Um, um, correct what, what you have done. Um, if, if you are limited in time and can't get to all the homework, then might just do a few exercises from each section. It's better to do a few exercises from each section than do um, a few sections completely and then the other sections not, not at all. Um, uh, that's not so beneficial as making sure to get to, to each exercise in, in the homework. Um, and then um, also, I'm going to say this uh, now at the end, it's, um, I think throughout the, the class, it would be very useful if, if everyone, um, I, I would ask everyone to pick a surah, pick a surah of the Qur'an that is at least 10 ayahs long, so not one of the very last surahs because we, we want some substance in there, it's not just a few words, but a surah that is at least 10 ayahs long, and so Preferably every day, uh, at least once or twice a week, um, you return to that surah. Um, preferably, if you if you can, you have that surah written out in a Quran in Arabic. That's the uh, that's the the thing that that must be there. But then also, preferably, you you have a, a recording that you can listen to it as well, so that as we go on, these things will start coming together, and you'll start being able to understand more and more. So that when, um, um, inshallah, after, after today's class, now you can start, well, you'll be able to tell the baz, the taz, and the thaz, which are some of the, especially ta, um, is one of the most common letters in, uh, in, in Arabic, uh, inshallah. You'll, you'll definitely see that all over the place. And then all the vowels, you see those all over the place. So even though we've only covered six of 28, 29 um, letters in, in Arabic, um, you'll see basically every, every space of, uh, of the page, you'll see these symbols now once you go looking for them. So the best thing would be that if everyone picks a surah at least 10 ayahs long and returns to it regularly throughout the course, so that that way you can kind of keep track and start, start learning things and seeing how things match up. So after today, now you can see the vowels see what the long vowels are, see the short vowels, then you can compare, listen to it in a recording, someone reciting it. Um, so that, that would be incredibly beneficial. And then, inshallah, finally, and we'll end the class on, the, on this note. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going just a few minutes over. Uh, inshallah, I'll, uh, I'll end each class with just a, a little uh, anecdote. Of, uh, of why it's important to, to learn Arabic. So for today, uh, some of you may be, may be familiar with this, um, but the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us that, um, tells us that we have an immense reward for reading, uh, reading the Arabic of the Quran. And he said, for every letter that is in, of course, I'm, I'm paraphrase, paraphrasing this hadith too, but for every letter of the Qur'an that we say, every letter, we get 10 hasanat, 10 good deeds, for every letter. He said, by a letter I don't mean alif, lam, mim, alam is one, one letter. I mean every single letter. For every letter, 10 harakat. So if we say, so for example, if we have um, um, 
the word Batha, Batha, I talked about that, that appears in the Quran, Batha, or I think it might, I'm not exactly sure, I'm pretty sure that verb appears in the Quran, Batha, two words, Ba and Tha, or two letters, sorry, Ba and Tha, that's 20 hasanat right there, 20 good deeds that are written for us, and that's the bare minimum. The more we start thinking about how to pronounce everything correctly and, and making sure that we're doing that and that we're conscious of everything and we try to take in the meanings as we're doing it too, those deeds, those good deeds that we get will be multiplied. The bare minimum is 10 good deeds for every single letter of the Quran that we say. So may Allah benefit us to, to get these good deeds and to, to see the whole uh, life of this world is just a chance to, to reap all these deeds and keep gathering them and gathering them until, until the day of judgment when they'll be shown to us and inshallah we'll be pleased. May Allah help us to be pleased on the day of judgment. Uh, may Allah facilitate us, um, facilitate for us the learning of his knowledge and of his book. Uh, and um, peace and prayers upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. All praises due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.